Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In today's episode, we are talking about password entropy. This is episode number two of a password series. Um, by the way, the whole series is supported by Trust Token. I started working on their security team and they allowed me to share some of our research with you guys, which is amazing. So yeah, let's jump in. Um, password entropy is a way of measuring password strength. Uh, you've probably heard the word entropy, but if you haven't yet, you've likely heard the word bits in the context of encryption. So one is uh, often using uh, AES, the advanced uh, encryption standard. Uh, AES is pretty much everywhere. We are using it every time we're browsing the internet. It is used to encrypt our Macs when we're using FileVault. It is essentially everywhere and usually ships in the form of 128-bit or 256-bit AES. So that number of bits is essentially the amount of entropy that the encryption key has. Uh, in the context of AES, the encryption key, uh, if 256-bit, is essentially one or zero uh, to the factor of 256. And that gives a sense of the key space. And to anyone who wants to visualize this, because it was kind of puzzling to me at first, there's an amazing video on YouTube that kind of shows the scale of the key space uh, and theoretically, 128-bit uh, AES is impossible, uh, impossible, impossible to brute force. Uh, same applies to 256, obviously. Um, now, brute forcing is essentially a way for an attacker to try each key in a specific key space. And statistically, uh, one needs to try half of possible combinations to find the key. So for 128-bit AES, it is statistically impossible for any computer or cluster of computers to brute force that the key space is just too large. Um, but what about simplifying this to kind of have a sense of, of entropy at a smaller scale? Switching to my overhead cam here, this is a set of two precision dice. Um, so what's nice of precision dice versus regular dice is you may notice here that where you have those six little dots, they're not engraved. Uh, so what happened here is they were engraved, but then these holes were filled with some white stuff that has the same density and weight as the black stuff so that this dice is not biased. So regular dice, when you have six holes here, this face is a little lighter. So sixes are likely to occur more often. In the context of one dice here, if I roll the dice, the chances that I have a one versus a six uh, versus whatever is equal. Um, so in the context of one dice, uh, well, essentially if someone was to brute force a number that you pick in your mind, well, they would statistically have to try three, uh, three times. So like, you know, number in your mind, is it a four? No, is it a one? Is it a three? Boom. Now uh, it's deterministic. So sometimes you'll have to go through the whole key space in this context, six possibilities. But you get my point. Statistically, it's half. So if we have two of those, uh, how many combinations are there? Well, mathematically speaking, we have six because there are six possibilities to the factor of two because we have two things here, two dice. Damn it, son. Uh, so that means that there are 36 possibilities. So we could have a one and a one, a one and a two, a one and a three, blah, 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 then a two and a one, two and a two, two and a three. So 36 different combinations. Uh, switching over to my main screen here, um, that means that it's entropy, which by the way is calculated using a base two logarithm of the number of combinations. By the way, my vocabulary in English for maths is not so great, so please correct me in the comments if I said something that is not right. What you're seeing here on screen, that I know is right for a fact. So if we have a dice roll of two dices, the number of bits of entropy is equal to 5.17. Now, a utility that I love, true command line on macOS and most Linux distributions is BC, which stands for basic calculator. So this is the formula that one needs to use to calculate entropy for a specific uh, scenario. So here we have uh, six different possibilities uh, because it is six faces of a dice and we have two dice. So that gives us that 5.17. Now, uh, in the context of a brute force attack, as I mentioned earlier, one statistically only needs to attack half of the key space. So this is pretty simple here in the context of this. We have 
36 possibilities, so 36 divided by 2 is 18. Now, another way of calculating this, if one knows the entropy, is using this formula here. So 2 uh, to the power of uh, entropy minus 1. So if I pop open uh, this, I never remember how this thing is called, spotlight, thank you. Um, 2 to the power of, uh, let me see here. Oh, I cannot move this thing. Damn it. Can I? Yes, I can. 5.17 minus 1. Uh, well, sorry, 2 to the factor of t this is 18. So this is another way of calculating this. Now, given uh, I didn't use all the decimal places, that's why you have this little noise here. Okay, but what about a password that is longer? In last episode, where I kind of debunked a few password myths, I explained uh, how a passphrase uh, chosen out of five words of a known list, such as the EFF, uh, shortlist number one is more secure than an eight character password now given both are generated using truly random uh, not, it's not the word I want to say but generated truly randomly essentially is what I was trying to say so true dice roll or using a hardware random number generator more of this actually later in the series um, so say we are uh, choosing a password truly randomly uh, and this here is the character set. So small letters, big letters, numbers, and a set of characters that people tend to use for passwords. Uh, what is the entropy of that password? So if we pop in that into a terminal, we here have 75 possibilities because there are 75 characters and it's an eight character password. So the entropy of that password is 49.83. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means that if both passwords, you know, one, I don't think we can actually call dice roll a password, but if that pin uh, was using the same key derivation function as that password, well, it would be incredibly faster to brute force a pin that is based on a dice roll of two dice versus that. Now, if we do the same thing for um, an actual passphrase, uh, so let's go up here. If I'm looking at this EFF short word list, it's a word list that is used in combination with dice roll to be able to generate cryptographically secure passphrases. This here uh, uses four dice. So you essentially roll four dice. And if you have one, 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 the word is acid. If you have two, three, six, two, the word is dodge. Uh, so essentially, if we want to calculate how many words are in that list, we can use some of the maths we just learned. So it's six to the power of four. So there are 1,296 uh, possibilities. So if we go here and we replace 75 with 1,296, uh, and we use, for instance, a five word uh, passphrase, well, the entropy here is now 51.70. So we know mathematically that that five word passphrase is more secure than the eight word. But how much more? Well, it's actually interesting. So each uh, integer that goes up, so if we go from 49 to 50, so each time it goes up a unit, it requires twice as much time to brute force. Uh, so if we would take this here and we do this minus 49.83, uh, we have 1.86. So if I do this and I multiply it by 2, we have 3.72. So that means that this passphrase is 3.72 times harder to brute force than the 8-character password. So that is super insightful when one is considering threat models. I mean, if a system uses a key derivation function that isn't very slow, so a key, deriv key derivation function that can be brute forced, um, well, this will add 3.72 times. So in the context of this research that I published um, here, let me see, so using a character password is never secure enough. Well, if it's used in the context of Mac OS uh, and it uses a special key derivation function that is called PBKDF2, never able to say this, damn it. Well, uh, with 25,000 iterations, it would cost $3 million using AWS's strongest instance type that one can lease. Uh, 
uh, and it would also take an enormous amount of time unless it is done in parallel, which is possible. But given that $3 million price to brute force that password, first things first, someone will likely rely uh, on a $5 wrench attack, which essentially is torture, to exfiltrate the credentials. But let's say that is impossible. Well, using that five word passphrase versus that eight character password would require 3.72, if my memory is good, times more work, which means that that $3 million is now more in the $10 million range. So it is pretty freaking significant going from 49.83 to 51.69, it moves that price for the attack from three to 10 million. Uh, so yeah, I hope this episode was insightful. Now, let me see if I forgot something actually. No, I haven't. Um, so you may have noticed on the overhead cam that I here have an only key and a UB key. So I will be creating episodes a bit later, not part of the password series, but just after it when I'll be talking about multi-factor authentication and I'll be talking about those uh, security keys. So if you haven't smashed that subscribe button yet, please do so and I'll see you soon. Bye.